Cannibalism has been a practice for hundreds of thousands of years in human history. As crazy as that sounds, it is still a very commonplace practice for certain cultures today. But what led to the discovery of Kruger disease, and how does this discovery relate to both mad cow disease and Creutzfeldt Jakob disease? Let's go above the brain and analyze the origins of Kruger. Kruger disease was discovered by Dr. Carlton Gajusek in 1957. Kruger disease is known as the first human prion disease transmitted to humans, and it is a part of a class of infectious diseases known as transmissible spongiform encephalopathies. Its inception began with the epidemic of the Foray tribe of northern Papua New Guinea in the 1950s and 60s. It was a commonplace practice for the Foray people to eat the dead tissues of dead family members, including the brain, which basically means that they practice endocannibalism as opposed to exocannibalism, which is the cannibalization of enemies. Kuru in Papua New Guinea means to shiver or tremble with fear, and that is the origin of the disease's name, with those experiencing symptoms likely to lose their coordination entirely and have a difficulty walking, tremors, behavioral and mood changes, dementia, and a difficulty swallowing or processing food. It is also known for those experiencing symptoms to laugh manically before they die, and that is why it is also known as the laughing death. People who develop Kuru can often live for another year, but at the cost of severe deficits and limitations. To try and prove that Kuru was not inherited, scientists spent a lot of their time gathering data about past bloodlines of the different tribes in Papua New Guinea. That combined with their research related to chimpanzees and Kuru, they had finally come to the conclusion that this was a transmissible disease as opposed to creutzfeldt jakob disease which is inherited. The movement behind the transmission of neurodegenerative diseases like Kuru also opened the door for research on other neurodegenerative diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's, and GSS which is also transmissible even though it is inherited genetically. Dr. Carlton Gajusek actually won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1976 for his findings regarding Kuru, and there is still no cure besides not practicing endocannibalism or eating human brains. Though there are very little cases today, it was discovered that the incubation period for Kuru can last over 30 years. So for all we know, Kuru is still alive, just waiting for its next host. Thank you. Like, subscribe, and hit those bell notifications.